Hey, what's going on guys? Another knife review for you. This is a double feature. I just did a, a double feature on the Schrade 301 and 302, which is the Tanto version of these, these military, massive, beastly <laughs> tactical knives from uh, you know, New Schrade, which is a uh, Taylor Cutlery. Um, these got a great review. Uh, even though I like these, I like the 303 and 304 better. And giving you a very quick comparison between the two, um, I think it's more of a versatile blade. It's going to appeal to more people, generally speaking. Not everyone's a Tanto person as far as ergonomics, even though this feels great in my hand. As a review, I can recommend this one more because of the fact that it has a straight handle. It's going to be more versatile. If you do happen to have very large hands, this one may not work for you, whereas this one would be fine for any size hand. But generally speaking, they're both winners. It's just I do prefer this one for a couple of reasons. So, I'll take this out of the picture here. I'm going to keep it here off the side for some comparison as I go through this knife. But uh, anyway, uh, just like the 301 and 302, very, very affordable. You're looking at average price about 23 bucks. That's what you can expect to pay. $23, give or take a couple bucks here and there. Um, as far as overall size and weight and everything like that, it's very comparable to the other, the 301 and 302. Um, the 303 and 304 is slightly less weight. <laughs> this one was 9.7 ounces, or excuse me, um, it was 10.6 ounces. This is 9.7 ounces. So slightly lighter. You can tell the difference when you're handling them side by side. You can actually feel that this is slightly lighter, but trust me, 9.7 ounces, this thing is still a beast compared to probably 99% of whatever EDC knives you happen to own already. So the biggest consideration here is the weight. Can you really handle an, a 10 ounce knife? Um, not a lot of people can. Not a lot of people will like that. But if you can, if you can get over that, or if you can use it in a, you know, a specific, or use it for a specific purpose other than maybe an EDC blade, if you threw this in a tackle box, or threw this in your, your tool chest, or you know, in your vehicle, this would make a great vehicle knife. Not necessarily something you have to carry all the time, but for a glove box, on a truck or a car or something, this is, this is where it's at for 20 bucks. Seriously, heavy, heavy use knife, great backup knife. But anyway, also the handle's slightly smaller than this. Both of these um, knives in the series have a 3.7 inch blade, and they're both hollow ground, and I mentioned this in the other review, but uh, because it is a thicker stock on this blade, and because the grind starts about 50% down, you do have a wider uh, grind overall. So you have a little bit more of a wedge effect. Even though these are razor sharp, and these did come razor, razor sharp out of the box, which I really loved, um, when you're cutting into something, particularly cardboard or other denser materials, you will feel more resistance. It's not because the knife is dull. It's something you have to understand. If you were comparing this directly with a, a very slim line knife, you may tend to think, you know what, this one's kind of dull because it's harder to cut through. Not the case at all. Um, it's literally hard to cut through because of the edge geometry, um, but it's not that your knife is dull. This, they do come very sharp, and the 9CR18MOV does handle a pretty decent edge. Again, in a $20 knife area or zone, um, the performance is definitely on par and still better than a lot of different knives out in the market. Um, the handle on this one is 4.8 inches, which is just 0.1 inches shorter than the other uh, models. And um, the over, that makes the overall length uh, just 0.1 difference as well. So the overall length on this is 8.5 as opposed to 8.6 on the uh, Tanto version. So barely noticeable if you compare these directly with each other you really wouldn't notice much. If you have them both in hand, you could tell it's tight, uh, a tiny bit lighter, but more than likely you're gonna pick one or the other, you're not gonna have both. But uh, overall, I like the design. It is, like I said, much more versatile as far as the series goes with the straight handle, with just a very simple kind of drop point blade. Um, actually, I would probably consider this more of a modified spear point with that heavy swedge on top. It does make for a uh, more of a spear point blade as opposed to a drop point. There is a little bit of uh, kind of jimping, if you consider that jimping, behind the thumb stud. It doesn't actually offer any kind of grip at all. It's very slick and smooth, but it does kind of give you a, a reassuring, this is where my thumb should be, feel, if that makes any sense at all. Um, no, it's not adding grip, but yes, when you put your thumb there, you go, yep, this is just where my thumb should be. Um, of course, ambidextrous thumb studs. There's ambidextrous thumb studs on all of these. I don't know if I mentioned in the other review. It'd behoove you to kind of watch both reviews because I'm going over a lot of the stuff that transfers through both, you know, versions or models. Um, biggest difference is, again, this one does not have a flipper as opposed to the other ones. And this one does have a lanyard hole as opposed to the other ones. 
Um, between these two, as far as the grip on the, uh, the 304, it g again gives you a little bit something, as I mentioned in the other review, uh, the texturing gives you kind of a cooler feel. I do prefer the way this looks because I think it does add something, you know, it makes the knife a little bit more attractive than being plain, but it also does give you a little something as far as um, the overall feel goes. No grip, it, I don't want to confuse you, it doesn't give you more grip or stability. This knife is just as stable as the other one. It just gives you a little something in, in way of, um, I don't know, overall feel and comfort. Um, also frame locks, this does not have a frame, frame lock stabilizer or lock bar stabilizer. But as I mentioned in this review, if you saw that, don't need one. I've never pushed it too hard. Um, if you're fearful of doing that, then you know, maybe you want to go for the other model, but I think it's completely unnecessary. Just like the other ones, there is no blade play up and down, left and right, nothing. I talked in the other review about inconsistencies with um, cheaper knives. And it's no different with these. Um, the plain one here happens to be just a little bit more smooth overall in the action than the one with the, the texturing, I guess you call that, on the well, not texturing, I guess um, cutouts, we'll just call them cutouts. Uh, this one's not quite as smooth, although it's smooth enough to still flip out easily, but I can feel the difference just in, um, you know, in opening and closing these. But uh, of course, you know, as I showed in the other video, you take these apart very simply with some Torx screws, or Torx, uh, you know, bits to get those screws out. You can um, kind of modify this yourself, smooth it up a little bit, polish the uh, pivot area, and you can make them very smooth very quickly. But out of the box, you can expect a nice, sharp, very strong locking frame lock. Very much overbuilt, very heavy, which is his biggest downside. The one advantage of these, which I like more, because this is also a tip down carry, right hand side tip down, and you do not have the option to, to swap it or anything. I like the fact that this one has a deep concealed clip. Okay, so the clip bends over, so when it's in the pocket, there's barely anything showing at all. Okay, in fact, if you're wearing cargo pants, there's almost there's nothing. It's, it is completely concealed, but with jeans, it can be a little bit thicker, so you'll see a tiny bit more of that knife. Uh, as far as retrieving the knife out of the pocket, did not change anything. Um, I told you on this one, I liked, because it's a heavy knife, that I had something to grab onto. And I thought that'd be a problem with this, but it really wasn't. Just uh, in grabbing the pocket clip itself and pulling out, it was totally fine. Just like the other one, the pocket clips are Perfect tension, not too tight, not too loose. Um, I would like the option to swap them. Not everyone's into tip down. In fact, I think the majority of the knife community leans more towards tip up for the reasons I mentioned in the other review. But as far as functionality, it functions fine. I do like that it is a, a deeper concealed clip than the other one. Um, what's a little odd is that they did put the lanyard hole on here, which is fantastic, but with the pocket clip orientation, it doesn't make so much sense because your lanyard would be in the pocket. The only advantage to this, obviously, would be if you remove the pocket clip. If you did not like it, just couldn't stand it, you could put a substantial lanyard on here. Because of the weight of this knife, it is not going to fall out of your pocket. So if you wanted to, you can put a uh, somewhat longer lanyard on here, put this down inside the pocket, have the lanyard be sticking outside the pocket. It's not going to budge. It's not going to snag anything. You're talking 10 ounces of, of steel here. Um, but when you wanted to retrieve the knife, you could just kind of grab the end of the lanyard and fish it out that way. So it is an option. Although, generally speaking, you will see knives with lanyard, um, lanyard holes towards the base of the knife like this when you do have a tip-up carry position, or at least the option, so that you could have it clipped to your pocket with the additional lanyard for more grip. Just something, I don't know, design thing that may have been overlooked. I think with most cheaper and or affordable knives, especially ones made overseas, something like the pocket clip is always overlooked. It seems like it's the last thing, more times than not, from a design standpoint, even though I don't design knives, I certainly use them and I, I pay attention to details. Uh, I've always found that the pocket clip seems like it's just slapped on there at the last second. They came up with this beautiful knife, very, very useful. And it's like, oh yeah, we need a pot clip. All right, let me pick that one. Let's put it here. Boom, done. It's, it almost seems like there's just not as much thought that goes into the clips, the position, the style, everything else, as there is the overall knife. But still, still really like this knife. Again, for like 23 bucks or so, it's really hard to beat. Comes nice and sharp. You can, you will need to be able to sharpen your own knives because it will dull out on you. It won't take very long. The again, the nine CR18 MOV. It's going to be very similar to like, in my opinion between like a 440C and an AUS-8. 
Um, so if you are using your knives frequently, you are going to need to touch this up. It will dull on you. Um, as far as uh, with my testing, this one has not personally dulled, but I did use a, not this particular one, but the textured version. I used the most out of all four of these, and I did need to sharpen it twice in my testing. All right, so that steel will not hold an edge forever. Something to consider. But overall, I still really like these knives. This one is my preference just because of the blade, uh, blade shot. So overall, I am still a huge fan of these. I will recommend these for someone who is really on a budget and looking for a hard use knife. Um, there is some good, good uh, competition out there, but I would say for a little bit more money, once you get into the $30, $40 range, then you're looking at some, some other knives that would give this uh, a run for its money. But again, 23 bucks or so, it's hard to beat. It's really hard to beat. They come nice and sharp. They will last. I will do destruction tests on the uh, Tanto version. So you can look forward to those videos in the future because I'll probably film it. But anyway, so that's it. That's the uh, SCH or Schrade Model 303 and Model 304. I like them. If you really are stuck in between which ones, I get the one with the texturing. Just gives it a little something. I like knives that are a little bit more original sometimes. Um, by the way, in the reverse grip, these also feel good. Much more versatile. So if that's something you are considering. Then there you go. So I like them. I think... Uh, that's a total win in my opinion. It's hard to find a nice knife that comes sharp that won't fall apart on you for 20 bucks or 25 bucks. It really is. I mean, they're, they're out there being exposed to the knife community as you are, seeing the videos you see. And that's the best part about you know, being on YouTube and even before YouTube on the forums is communicating with other knife people. You wouldn't be exposed to half of the knives out there otherwise. So I feel very fortunate to, to have this kind of a forum uh, particularly in a video format where you can freely talk and, and just it's so much better. I love the forums. I love to read about stuff, but watching a video, I'm telling you 9 out of 10 of you out there, you, you hang out on YouTube because it's that much more fun seeing and hearing and, and getting a better understanding of these knives as opposed to reading about them and looking at pictures. So anyway, that's all. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. If you have these knives or pretty much any knives I ever review, Feel free to uh, put your, your feelings on them in the comments. You know, it's not just about my opinion, it's about all of ours. And being on YouTube, you want a collective, uh, an idea from numerous people about a specific product before you may or may not want to buy it. So um, don't just take my word for it, listen to everyone else as well. So I'm always interested in your feedback as well because I may have an experience with a knife and think it's great or think it's total junk and someone out, else out there may have a completely different experience with that knife and I, I'd like to understand as to why. You know, is it because it's inconsistent? Is it because I got one of these and it was fantastic and you got one and it was just shoddy? Is that what happened? I like to know exactly, you know, what everyone else is experiencing with different types of knives, whether it be cheap or expensive. Doesn't matter. I love the user feedback. So that's all. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a great day as usual. And I will see you soon. Take care.